how am I going to get this new wheel bearing into this spindle, which is press fit in there. I don't have a press or a wheel bearing puller, but I do have a slide hammer. And over there is a bottle jack. Maybe I could pull this out and build a little shot press to press this in. This is the bearing. And to top it all off, I only have like five hours to do all this because this uh, failed inspection, I just want to save $20. I don't want them to uh, charge another 20 to reinspect it if I can get it in there back there in like 10 days and it's already been like a while because it took a little bit to ship this. If I don't do it tonight, then I'll have to give this to the um, shop to press it in. I'll just give them like the spindle and that. I think they were asking for like $500 to um, do this whole job so it probably would be, I don't know, $150 for them to press it. Yeah, I gotta figure this out. I have this and I have a lot of this. And this goes in the middle. That's how I'm going to weld it. The scrap triangle fits perfectly in between these two, um, so I'm going to weld it. Okay, this is done now. I'm going to find the center of this and uh, drill a hole there so I can put my slide hammer through it. Just like that. And I'll tighten it. Slide hammer it. It's kind of late right now, so I don't want to be hammering on this all night. Um, I'll do it a little bit, and if it starts coming out, then I'll know I can get it out. And I think I'll just use the car's weight, like just lower the car onto the new bearing to see if I could like press it in that way. Um, if not, then I'll need to like build a press for it. But if I can't be completely sure that I can do all of the stuff tomorrow morning, then I need to bring it into the shop just so they can uh, do the work and then I can re-register the car without like paying 20 more dollars. That's, that's all I'm doing all this for. It's just to save $20. Today's the second day of this adventure. I got the steering knuckle out. Um, it was pretty difficult because the bolts have been in there for 16 years. But my plan for removing this whole hub assembly um, is to hammer it out because I saw someone else uh, do that with this exact same car. They put it in a vise. They had a bigger vise. They could set it like in, a, in the vise normally and just hammer it out. But this vise isn't deep enough um to put it in like this way i'll tighten this up more but it'll look like this and um i can just there's nothing underneath this so i can just hammer this out after this i got someone to hold the smaller hammer and I hit it as hard as I could with the sledgehammer and it just wouldn't budge. So it's time for plan C, building a hydraulic press. Hello everyone, I'm making a shop press um, using that. That's a 20 ton jack. Um, I don't expect this thing to handle more than maybe six tons. The steel I'm using is an eighth of an inch thick. It's about two inches long. These two pieces are going to be the top. And I'm going to weld them together so it's like a C-channel, so it'll look like that. So 
So they'll be together like this, and you put the pin on the outside, so that's kind of what the inside will look like. The next step is I gotta drill some holes in the ends of these. Um, just gotta line up with these. Okay, I've built just enough of my hydraulic press to um, actually use it and take this off. If I can't get this off myself tonight, then tomorrow morning I need to have someone else do this immediately because uh, my time is really running out. The press is upside down right now. This is the top of it and normally the bottle jack would sit in it like this. Um, and so if this is upside down, then the bottle jack's upside down. The bottle jack doesn't work upside down just because of how it's made. Well, let me set it up and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I got the knuckle held on these, and um, the spindle part is free to be pushed out. Let's see if this works. The weakest link in my hydraulic press is definitely these pieces here. They're, they kind of bent when they were bending. They're, these were bending in to this hub and holding it it was making it impossible for it to move because I was pushing on one end but it was grabbing just as hard on the other end. So I put these pins in to keep um, this from bending into this hub. Wow, I had really given up hope on this a few minutes ago. I really didn't think that this thing was strong enough to support the weight of what I'm trying to do. And I put this chain on, I didn't even want to record it um, doing this because it was just like so sketchy and horrible. Um, and I was, this is 10 tons, and I was base, I was maxed out on this thing. And then with the jack, I realized it started to get just a tiny bit easier and I was like, oh no, it's bending again. Because like, at a certain point, it just starts to bend this and that's like the most pressure it can give. But there was like a bang and I was like, yeah, I just broke something. Then I looked in here and I saw that I actually uh, got it to move. There's a brown and then there's a rusted ring and then there's that brown again. That rusted ring is the back side of the bearing and it's separated from this casting right here. This I thought like this casting was gonna break or something. It was just so much force. But somehow it worked, it all worked out. I, I did it. <laughs> Look at my watch. It's 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. It's fully seated. And, uh, yep. 
it spins. That's that's what matters. Well, <laughs> that is the story of the wheel bearing. <laughs> I guess I can finally go to bed now. Yeah, anyway, thank you for joining me on this crazy adventure. If you really stuck around to the end of this video, leave a comment. That's super cool. Um, thank you for watching. I had a lot of fun, even though I probably overdid it a bit. But that's kind of the way I like to do things, I guess. So, I don't know. Hopefully there will be more adventures like this in the future. Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.